10 times WWE tried to repeat success. Number 10, Lex Luger is the new Hulk Hogan. When Hulk Hogan decided to part ways with WWE in 1993, it left WWE in a difficult position. Hogan had been the face of the company for years and there was arguably nobody that could fill Hogan's shoes. WWE had to think long and hard about who should replace him and Vince McMahon had the short-sighted idea of making Lex Luger the next face of the company by simply giving him a gimmick that was in essence a carbon copy of Hogan's. Luger would become the All-American, and whilst this patriotic base gimmick was somewhat successful and somewhat popular, it failed to truly take off. WWE eventually realized that copy and pasting Hogan's prior gimmick wasn't going to lead to success. Thankfully, WWE instead began to look at younger wrestlers that were known for their ring work. Wrestlers such as Shawn Michaels and Bright Hart became household names in the company, and HBK and Hart would carry WWE through a new era, an era that would eventually be known as the New Generation Era. Number 9. Rhea Ripley and Dirty Dom are the new China and Eddie Guerrero Upon Dominic Mysterio starting an on-screen angle with Rhea Ripley in 2022, it became obvious that WWE were trying to replicate the success of a certain storyline from the Attitude Era. The storyline in question was their acclaimed China and Eddie Guerrero storyline, and whilst not exactly the most subtle thing in the world, it was a smart move for WWE to emulate such a celebrated story arc. Ripley has been compared to China throughout a WWE career, and Mysterio's connection with Guerrero is well documented. The similarities came to light when Ripley and Mysterio are on screen together, and it's clear that Triple H has taken a ton of inspiration from the Attitude Era story. Number 8. Montreal The Montreal Screwjob brought waves of attention to WWE. And whilst the actual Montreal Screwjob was very much a real-life event which saw WWE screw Bret Hart out of the title, subsequent versions of the Screwjob were completely scripted. WWE have always had this weird obsession with replicating the screw job, and it's almost as if they hope that the replicating it will result in a surge of interest in their product, yet this never occurs. The screw job has reoccurred time and time again. Take for instance the 1998 Survivor Series, WWE redid the screw job just one year after the original. Fast forward a decade later and they tried to replicate the buzz again by delivering a similar finish for a pay-per-view match between CM Punk and The Undertaker. These types of finishes are insanely lazy and uninspiring and hopefully with the new team leading the way in WWE, the reimagining of the Montreal Screwjob is going to be nowhere to be found on WWE programming. Number 7. The Brand Split a lot of fans grew up during the Ruthless Aggression era, so the inaugural 2002 brand split is looked back on fondly. For the most part, the 2002 brand split was a substantial success and it allowed names such as Batista, Brock Lesnar, Eddie Guerrero and Randy Orton to become some of the biggest stars in WWE. 14 years later in 2016, the WWE product has become stale. Raw featured both brands and SmackDown was a nothing show where nothing of importance occurred. They made the welcome move to reintroduce a brand split and this delighted the fans as it was long overdue and WWE can now put particular focus on up and coming stars. For the first few months of the brand split, WWE hit a home run and this was especially the case when it came to SmackDown, as despite the SmackDown show having a limited roster, virtually every wrestler on the brand had a story and a compelling story at that. Unfortunately, WWE couldn't resist diluting the brand split and stars eventually began to appear on both shows and infamously, they introduced a wildcard rule which saw wrestlers appear on the opposite brand. The brand split is still in place today, yet it fails to make a connection like it did back in 2002, and this is mainly down to how often wrestlers appear on the opposite show without any fanfare or even an acknowledgement. Number 6. A Leap of Faith One of the most iconic moments in WWE took place in 1998, and it saw Mick Foley get thrown off the top of the Hell in a Cell structure. Even non-wrestling fans knew about this moment, and it was a once-in-a-lifetime spot that WWE have tried to replicate. They've tried numerous times to deliver huge spots from top of the cell, and in turn, a new Mick Foley-style moment. The closest they got to replicating such a standout moment was in 2016 at WrestleMania 32, when Shane McMahon leaped from the top of the structure onto The Undertaker. Whilst this moment was incredible, it just paled in comparison to the original. Number 5. Invasion the Nexus story in 2010 was the exact story that the WWE product needed at the time. The story itself was unexpected, it was raw, and it received mainstream attention. It also helped due to the violent nature of the Nexus debut segment, it was a throwback to the themes of the Attitude Era, which raised the interest in the WWE product. Even though the end product of the aforementioned storyline failed to hit the mark, there's no denying that the debut segment made a ton of noise and almost 15 years later, fans still often discuss and rave about the segment. 
In 2020, during the COVID-19 era of WWE, they decided to incorporate elements of the Nexus storyline with a new storyline with a group known as Retribution. The storyline began in the summer of the aforementioned year when a mass group of individuals set fire to a generator on Raw. Then the next night on SmackDown, members of the group attacked the announcers and the audience. Whilst the angle was unexpected, the presentation was terribly done, and the WWE's limitations due to the pandemic aside, it looked like an angle that would be presented at a cheap independent show. In subsequent weeks, the storyline got even worse, as the wrestlers in the group would debut comically bad masks and they would reveal their names which sounded like names out of a joke book. The storyline over time became the laughing stock of WWE programming and fans still liked to make jokes about the story years after the story arc came to its abrupt conclusion. Number 4 24 7 Rules The hardcore title concept was one of the highlights of the Attitude Era. Seeing names such as Crash Holly, Al Snow, and Big Boss Man compete for the title was hilarious, and the WWE also knew when to call it a day as the four year existence of the title was just about right. One of the more unique elements of the hardcore title was that it was contested under 24 7 rules. So when the WWE decided to introduce the 24-7 title in 2019, fans hoped that they would present some memorable segments across TV and social media. The big reveal of the belt itself was done by Mick Foley and the reveal received audible boos as the title looked incredibly dull and fans were expecting something a little more thrilling in terms of a design. The title itself never failed to capture the magic of the hardcore title, which was a shame as certain wrestlers, specifically R-Truth and Drake Maverick, put considerable effort into making their segments and moments mean something. Eventually in 2022, the era of the 24-7 title would come to an end, as reigning champion Nikki Cross threw the belt in a literal trash bin. Or at least she tried to. Number 3 Goldberg 2.0 WCW truly struck gold when it came to Goldberg. WCW's booking and presentation of Goldberg were superb and it resulted in Goldberg becoming one of WCW's most successful characters. The WCW formula, at least early on, was to keep Goldberg's matches short and sweet, and this prevented him from being exposed. WWE saw how WCW presented Goldberg, and they used this formula whenever they would to debut any type of muscly, larger-than-life persona, and this was especially the case in 2012 when they debuted Ryback. From the moment Ryback debuted, the Goldberg comparisons were loud and frequent. As Ryback didn't just look like Goldberg, he was booked in the exact same way. To their credit, this formula, as it often did, worked, and Ryback by the end of 2012 was one of the most over talents in the company. The problem was that WWE couldn't resist booking Ryback in longer matches, and this gradually exposed him to the audience, and eventually the crowd turned on him, and they were forced to move Ryback down the card. Number 2 Attitude Era Showcase Matches the WWE have the habit over the past 20 years of trying to emulate the success of the Attitude Era. They dipped in the waters of nostalgia numerous times and more often than not, it's never led to a surge of interest in the product. One of the ways they tried to bring back Attitude Era fans was having Attitude Era showcase matches. These were matches between the Attitude Era stars in the modern era. Whilst this was fine on paper, the reality is that the names they used for these matches were way past their prime. Matches such as DX vs The Brothers of Destruction and The Undertaker vs Goldberg were abysmally received, and the matches were so overwhelmingly bad that the wrestlers themselves spoke out about how disappointed they were with how their respective matchups went. Number 1 Authority Figure vs Heroic Babyface one of the most acclaimed storylines of all time saw Stone Cold Steve Austin feud with the evil Mr. McMahon. The storyline is partly responsible for WWE's boom period in the late 90s, and it was a lightning in a bottle type storyline as both men had indescribable chemistry that resulted in some of the most well crafted segments in WWE's history. Coming out of the Attitude Era, when the product wasn't as popular as it once was, it was attempted to revert to the glory days by retelling the Austin vs McMahon storyline with a new babyface and authority figure. This has been done virtually every year since 2001, and it's a formula that WWE believes works. There have been feuds between Raw GM Eric Bischoff and John Cena, SmackDown GM Teddy Long and The Undertaker, and even WWE Exec Triple H and Daniel Bryan. They've even used McMahon in the same storyline and just switched out Austin for a different babyface. Names who have acted as a substitute for Austin include The Undertaker, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and even Kofi Kingston. Some of these storylines to WWE's credit have been fantastic, yet none of them have ultimately met the high standards of the initial Austin vs McMahon rivalry. But there you have it folks, 10 times WWE tried to repeat success. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.